presented by Chrysler, the name that makes you in watch band. Tonight, Tales of Tomorrow brings you an electrifying experience, a tense, tingling drama from the Lost Planet. Starring William Coburn and Merle Albertson. Before we know it, Christmas and Christmas gift shopping will be here. That's why I want to tell you about a very special gift for him. Cigarette? Yes, it is a beautiful box, isn't it? Imported leather with golden tooling and lined with beautiful moray taffeta. A man could use it in so many ways. For a cigarette, jewelry, knickknacks. And even though a box like this would make a grand gift by itself, thanks to Chrysler, you can give it at no extra cost, with the greatest gift of all inside, a set of Chrysler men's jewelry. The finest cuff links and tie bars are crafted by Chrysler. Here is your signet, the only gold-filled jewelry that's initialed while you wait. Yes, it takes only seconds to insert his own custom look initials and create the gift that's his alone. So give the gift within a gift. Your signet jewelry, just thirteen fifty for the cuff links and tie bar in the handsome leather-covered jewel box. If he likes the sparkle of precious stones, he'll love Chrysler's new Normandy set, capturing the beauty of expensive French gold links and set with imported hand-cut jewels in garnet, sapphire, and onyx colors, only fifteen dollars. Here's another unique Chrysler gift set, golden mesh. Inspired by the chain mesh armor of the Crusades, with space for engraving. Only $12.50 in the leather-covered jewel box. If it's crafted by Chrysler, it's made with jeweler's quality to last undimmed through the years. Make it Chrysler for Christmas. Give the gift within a gift. A Chrysler jewelry set in the leather luxury of the Chrysler jewel box. And remember... Your jeweler will gladly lay away your Chrysler gift set until Christmas for a small deposit. And now Chrysler presents The Lost Planet, starring William Coburn and Merle Albertson. Dad, what is it? I've just completed my computation. At this time tomorrow, the Earth will be one flaming white inferno. Happy, that's not our show. Where's that picture coming from? Another ending with the dust. Go to sleep. What do you say, Hank? Fine. Go to bed. Why should I go to bed? Okay, then don't. Don't ever get married, Hank. They're all nuts. The whole bunch of them. I promise you, I won't. I won't. I will never get married. I ain't one thing as another. Why don't you stop? I mean it, Hank. Stop it. Get lost. Out of the hospital today, and there's nobody there to meet. I gotta grab the bus all the way up here by myself. You know I was getting out of the hospital today. Where were you, huh? Where were you? Well, look, remember I got a very funny joke about a guy. Oh, I know what happened. That, that picture came from out of nowhere. Get a hold of Earl Whisker if you can. What is it? We, we were cut off. That picture through the window is going out in place of our show. Hey, Walt says we're going back on the air. Mort, Mort, how about running a film? We don't have any. Mort, we can't sit on the standby slide for half an hour. John, John, John. what? Can you tell us what's happening out here? I don't know. Looks like we just lost the slide chain, too. 
Jim, so we, we got to feed some kind of picture to the network. I don't know what we're going to do. Yep. Sports coming out. Get the scene started again, uh -huh. Jim. Stand by, please. Sir? Get back to this. Sir, please. 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 Let's have it quiet, please. please. Get Bob Williams. Uh, have him make an announcement. Listen, John, look, will you tell us what is happening? The picture came from nowhere, Jim, and interrupted our program. Now we're back on the air. I don't get it. Uh, look, Jim, make an apology announcement so we think of something to do. A what? An apology announcement. Go ahead. Look, Bob isn't here. Do it yourself, please, Jim. Me? What'll I say? I don't know anything. Go ahead. Well, look, there's Roger DeCoven. He'll do it. Roger! Hey, hey, wait. Hold him on that camera. Stay right with him, wait. Something John wants you to do a quick apology announcement. We lost our network. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, due to circumstances beyond our control. Why don't you get lost? Look at Just like the Sphinx. See no evil, hear no evil. Now, yeah, what's the use? Get some more beer. It's right behind you. I said, get some more beer. Do something around here for I'll a change. Get now. She'll get it. you've done for me in two months. I got a letter from Dawson. Remember Dawson? Johnny Dawson? That's right. That's from me. That guy. Boy, did he used to buck for rank. Yeah, sure, sure. What happens again? Wait, just stand around the Roger and Merle by the crazy. One thing I can't understand. Look, the mission to come into our studio, what, what else could it be? Jim, you're crazy. That's impossible. So what yeah. do you mean? We, we've been picking up another network's picture, Jim? Well, it must be. He says it's not coming from any studio here at ABC. We'll make this pause here now, Jim. Uh, what then? Well, he knows that picture in the window keeps interfering. Interview Mr. Wolf. What's this? Uh, keep it going. Just Roger, Roger. Wolf says we're back in the air again. You're on again. All right, let's have it quiet. Please, stand up. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, due to the lack of time, the program we had intended presenting this evening will have to be postponed until a later date. But, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Merle Worcester, the head of our engineering department, who has just been telling us that the two scenes we've just witnessed at the window are definitely not emanating from any studio in this building. Nor from any other network, for that matter. The chances of one channel interfering with another channel is impossible. Well, then where, in your opinion, is it coming from, Mr. Worcester? I don't think this uh, ghost picture is being transmitted from any studio at all. I think it's a living scene that's actually happening somewhere in this general area, perhaps in an apartment house. But how's that possible? I don't know, Rog. Maybe it's being reflected off an ionized cloud right in the middle of our wavelength, like a mirage. Mirage? Yes. <clears throat> There's a theory that every sound and action we go through is preserved in the ether in a form of electrical impulse. That's pretty theoretical, of course. Well, do you feel then that that explains this? I can't explain this. <coughs> Maybe something's yes. happening in our atmosphere tonight that's accidentally causing the right combination of conditions to produce this uh, special image. Mm, you really feel then that... Uh, that the scenes we've been viewing through the window are actually coming from some apartment, some, some kitchen right here in this vicinity, in this area. Well, then I'll come from a studio. I'll bet my life on... So I'll drink a lot. Your Highness. Your Highness, the Queen of Sheba. See no evil, hear no evil. What's everybody so quiet about? What did it say? Anything. Recite a poem or something. Come on, recite a poem. Shut up. What did you say? I knew a poem once, a very interesting poem that taught us in high school. It was, uh, the gossips tell the story of the sparrow and the cat, the feline, thin and hungry, and the sparrow was exceedingly fat. I thought I remembered, but I guess I don't know any more than the first part. I never forgot it. What's the feline? That's a cat. 
Hello, feline. Boy, it looks good, Joe. How did you get so sweet, sugar? Get lost. If you two people will excuse your highness. I know you have your problems, but I have mine, too. The sponsor expects a commercial. We've got to do a commercial. I'm sorry, Mr. Lewin, but we're not on the air. That's well, I mean when we get back on the air. Well, that's the, there's no guarantee that we're going to stay on the air. Well, then do the commercial over again. and over and we're keep trying. it going. We're just standing by with it. Oh, we're back on the air again. Kill him, Jim. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. All, right. All, right. All, right. All right. All right. Let's have it quiet, please. Stand by. I know that gift problems can make your head spin. But the problem of figuring out a really different gift for your one and only need not make you stand on your head. Not when Chrysler has just the right gift. A unique gift that sets everything straight. A gift that magically transforms her old watch into a beautiful new bracelet watch fashion. The kind that cost $50 or more. Yes, with a one and only Chrysler Golden Fantasy Band, you actually give her a new bracelet watch for Christmas for just the cost of a band alone. Only $9.95. It's the newest note in fashion watch bands and just about the best idea for her Christmas gift. The new slim fantasy band that transforms even the tiniest watch into a true $50 bracelet watch. It's Golden Fantasy by Chrysler. Remember the name. She'll always remember the gift. And whichever style you choose, jewel set or tailored, you can be sure it's right. Yes, the newest Golden Fantasy fits and flatters her watch, whether it's any shape or size. And see how this bracelet band expands. It's another Chrysler Plus. As she works around the house, she'll slip Fantasy up out of the way. All this at a price less than many ordinary bands. Golden Fantasy is only $9.95. So give her a new bracelet watch for just the cost of the band alone. Give her Fantasy by Chrysler. You know Chrysler quality is jeweler's quality. So when you give Chrysler, you give... I love you too, sweetie. I'm scared. Oh, no, stop, stop, stop. Let's run away. No, no. Let's run away. Shh. No, stop it, please. I, I can't bear the thought of it. All right, stop looking. You can't bear the thought of it? Fine. We'll wrap it up and forget the whole thing. And you can forget me too because I'll go someplace else. Out of town, it makes no difference. Forget it. I don't care. Henry, I can't see you. Honey, honey, stop it. <laughs> Easy, 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 easy. Now, come on, come on, try to keep your voice slow. Oh, I'm sorry. Right, it's all right, all right. All right, easy now. What are you afraid of? Come on. Come on, honey. I'm afraid we'll get caught. All right, so what do you want us to do? Forget the whole thing? Give it up, get a job, go away someplace? We, we some... both get jobs. No, honey, we please, make no, out. We help. make out. Listen to me. Come on. Shh, shh. Just listen to me what I'm going to tell you. He's got a perfect setup here. He's got an insurance policy and he's got a business. Why well, settle for less? He can get more. Huh? Make more of his money than he do to me. You mean that? I don't know. I don't care whether you know it or not. I just want to know if you mean it. That's all. Oh, of course you don't. Of course you don't. Don't you understand, sweetie? Without money, love, love just goes out of windows. So... I didn't mean it like a sound. I didn't mean it like a sound. Come on. Please. Please. When's it going to happen? In a couple hours, just a couple hours, when everybody in the building goes to sleep. What if he screams? He's not going to scream. What if you go? He's not going to scream. I told you, he wouldn't scream. 
got to fall six floors. Six floors. He's going to hit the bottom so... Uh, Should we call the police? What, what good is that going to do? don't even know where they live. Well, maybe some of our viewers at home have recognized one of these people. That's a possibility. Be. Well, should we tell them how to contact us in case one of them has recognized any of these people? <laughs> for the last. I'll do it. It's all for the last. <laughs> the Rockefellers at home. Now, no more beer. You drink too much, pal. Go get some beer. Towards the clothes. I mean, it's towards the clothes. It ain't even 10 o'clock yet. The grocery store downstairs is open. Closed. Mickey's always closes at 9.30. Don't tell me what time he closes. 10 o'clock he closes. Let me get no. it. No. I'll get it. This higher education, 1952. You know, she went to college. <laughs> That's all right. In a couple of hours, you won't have to. It's going to be all over, baby. Oh, well, we're back on again. Listen, Peggy, read back that, that last bit about the grocery store. Uh, the grocery's downstairs, and he said it's closed. Mickey always closes at 9.30. Jim, Jim, it might be the name of Mickey's grocery store. Try it, please. Lower it along. Worth a try. The Red Bull. Here. Yeah. I'm the grocery store. Gee. Keep after him, wait. Gee, gee, gee. Here, here. Here, here we are. Groceries. Groceries. Mickey's. Mickey's. Must be a Mickey's. 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 I'll have to try them all. Relax, stop. If he screams, I'll hit him. Leave go. Come on. Suppose they find him right away. They're not going to find him right away. Who's going to find him right away in an alley there? Sometimes. At one o'clock in the morning, how can it be? Nobody's going to be there at one o'clock. Is, is that that when you're going to yes, do it? Oh, right. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Now look, tomorrow morning, somebody's going to come up here and they're going to tell you some very, very, very sad news. And then tomorrow night's going to be all over. Who do you think will come up? I don't know who's going to come up. Probably the cops or somebody else. That's right. What, they ask me They're questions? Stop it! Now, what have you got here? What have you got? Listen to me. This guy is a lush. He's a character, right? That's right. That's right. He gets so drunk, honey, that he lights a cigarette and almost burns himself to death. He gets so drunk, this guy... He drinks and he falls down the flight of stairs. Hmm? So he goes to the hospital, honey, right? But what puts him in the hospital? The guy gets so drunk that he runs in front of a bus and they have to send him away to the hospital. He's famous for it. The cops know it. The people know it. Everybody. So then what? He falls out a window. A window. Everybody expects that. Nobody asks any questions. Hmm, listen to me. Listen to me. Please. Please stop worrying. You think everybody will be sure? Yes, yes, they will. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. And everybody always sleeps very good on Ninth Avenue. Ninth Avenue! Ninth Avenue!
Well, he's a medium-sized fellow. He buys beer in your store. He has a wife. Her name is Jean. No, I don't know that last name. You don't, you don't know anyone that fits that description. Oh, all right. Thank you. Any luck? Still raining. Don, Don, how about you? No, no good, no good. Still all right? Must be closed. Let's keep on trying. They must be busy. We've got to keep on ringing. <laughs> Close. Huh? We need to do it. Close about 9.30. I'll oh, cut. What well, cuts? What's going on? I was telling her the stores are probably be I know what you were doing. What well, cuts? What's going on? What's happened? Don't get excited. Come what do you mean you don't get excited? How long has this been going on? Oh, come on, use your head. Let's see that one there. Uh, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, 48, no, he can get I'll be fine. Just I know. We'll have to take the chance if he would have screamed when he would have been all over, please. Let's run away. No. Let's run away. Please, no, stop it. Let's take the limit. Listen, Listen to me. Please. Listen to me. Money, please, listen to me. Now, look at me. Look, all you have to do is put a light up. That's all. A light. Shh. Now, listen. Just put the light up. That's all you have to do. You don't do anything. I'll do it. I'll throw him out the window. I'll drag him in. Come on, come on. Just put it out. That's all. Easy, Bessie. Go on. Just put it out. Put it out! Come on! Let's go. Let's go. This is a matter of life and death, officer. I, I, I can't explain now. There's no time. Listen, in a couple of minutes, a guy is going to be pushed out of a window on 48th Street and 9th Avenue. Yes, yes, that's right. I'm calling from a television studio on 66th Street. But look, don't come here! Do you think anyone's hurt? He could be with known by now. Maybe he isn't dead. Maybe he isn't dead. I'll find out when I check on the way home. You mean you'll go down? That's right, I'll go down, yes. Do you think there's a chance for you? Listen, Well, then why do you have to... Because I have to find out if he's dead or not. That's why. Now, come on, sir. Take it easy. Take it easy. Just listen. Listen to my mother. Shh, shh. All you have to do is remember. I went home. We went to bed. Right? We left him in the kitchen, and he was drinking. That's all. That's all. Come on. Come on. What's the matter? All night long, I felt like... What? What did you feel? I don't know. I mm. if, if it's somebody who... Who's what? Come on. If it's somebody who's watching. No, 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 no. Don't be silly. There's nothing over there. Big, clear, blank wall. Nobody can hear you. I know, I know. Haven't you... No. Just your imagination. Here it is, baby. That's all it is. Well, it's all over now. Yes. All right, what's been going on? 
man here. Listen, officer. What's been going on here? Look, tomorrow morning, you're going to get a report that a guy accidentally fell out of a six-story window on 48th Street, 9th Avenue. Look, when that report gets in, you can check with us. We'll have further information for you. The Window was an original television play by Frank DeFelita. The people in the window were Rod Steiger, Frank Maxwell, and Virginia Vincent. The players appearing in the opening sequence of The Lost Planet were William Coburn and Merle Albertson. The secretary was played by Muppet Peter. The following people were played by themselves. Jim Walsh, floor manager. Roger DeCoven, announcer. Robert F. Lewin, agency executive. Merle Wooster, chief engineer. Don Medford, director. Mort Abrams, producer. The producers of Tales of Tomorrow would like to thank the technical and administrative personnel of ABC for their cooperation in helping us to present The Window. We hope you found it an exciting and different kind of television experience.